Mixed models can sometimes take a long time to run. This presentation introduces some tips and strategies for improving mixed models performance. First of all, see if you can make changes to the running environment. For example, if you have many applications open, close them. If you have a by statement in your model, use the ODS no results statement to prevent the results for each by group from accumulating in the results window. By default, ODS graphics is turned on, and it can take longer time to run your model to generate some default ODS graphics. If ODS graphics is not needed, turn it off by using the ODS graphics off statement. If it is available to you, submit your program in batch mode. If you use Unix, setting an appropriate mem size value should help the performance of mixed models. When it comes to more efficient coding of your program in ProgMix or ProgLimix, see if you can process the model by subjects. I will use a ProgMix program to illustrate this. The same strategy works for ProgLimix as well. Suppose your model has a random effect ID that has many levels. You can use the random ID statement in ProgMix to specify this random effect but this can be resource intensive. Instead, if you can use the subject equal option in the random statement, that is random intercept slash subject equals ID, you are fitting the same model, but the subject equal option enables the procedure to process the model by subjects and therefore is more numerically efficient. You can further improve the efficiency by sorting your data by ID and removing ID from the class statement in ProgMix, provided that ID is a numeric variable. If you specify ID in the class statement, resources are needed to create the design columns for the class variable ID. Removing ID from the class statement would save resources associated with dealing with the class variables. An alternative way of coding a more efficient model is to use the repeated statement with a CS covariance structure. You might recall from linear mixed models theory that a random intercept model in ProgMix is equivalent to a repeated model with the compound symmetry covariance structure. Using the equivalent repeated statement model can sometimes be more computationally efficient, especially when the random effect ID has many levels. The example thus far deal with one random effect. But what if you have more than one random effect? How can you use the subject equal option in the random statement so the model is processed by subjects? Well, suppose you have three random effects, C, A by C, and B by C. You can rewrite this statement by factoring out the common factor C and specifying it in the subject equals option. The remaining part, intercept, representing a constant of 1, A and B, would be specified after the random keyword. This specification enables the procedure to block the data by the subject effect C, and therefore is more computationally efficient. Note that in this specification, it seems that A and B are specified as both the fixed effects they appear in the model statement, and the random effects. They also appear in the random statement. But because of the subject equals option in the same random statement, the real random effects are actually A by C and B by C. Some options are more resource intensive than others, so it might be a good idea to choose certain options that are less computationally intensive. For example, there are many different estimation methods for the denominator degrees of freedom for fixed effects, which can be specified by using the DDFM equals option in the model statement. DDFM equals residual is the fastest method, while DDFM equals KR is the most resource intensive method. The default method, DDFM equals contain, can sometimes be numerically demanding in which case you might want to try DDFM equals setter or DDFM equals BW. Another option that can affect the speed and memory requirements of ProgMixed 
is the type equals option in the random and repeated statements. When different types of covariance structures all make sense to the data, type equals un and the spatial covariance structure are resource intensive. Type equals tope offers some flexibility in the covariance structure, but is much less resource intensive. Also, when you have negative covariance parameter estimates, using the no bound option can remove the boundary constraints, but it can require more resources. Some post-processing statements and options can be resource intensive, such as the ODS graphics and the output statements. And the solution out p equals, out pm equals, and influence options in the model statement. You might exclude some of these options if possible when fitting the model, and then use PROC PLM to perform this post-fitting analysis. I will explain the use of PROC PLM later. The group equals option in the random and repeated statements increases your model flexibility in estimating different sets of covariance parameters, but it can greatly increase the number of parameters to be estimated and therefore impede the performance of the procedure. There are some resource efficient options that might be beneficial to know. If you are only interested in obtaining estimates and predictions, you might use the no test option in the model statement. If you know one or more covariance parameter estimates, you might use the hold equals or no iter option in the PARM statement. In Prognomics, using Q points equals 1 invokes Laplace approximation and can be much more computationally efficient. You might consider using a high performance procedure. PROC HP mix uses the sparse matrix technique and works especially well for mixed models with thousands of levels for fixed and or random effects. It also runs faster for hierarchically nested models and cross-classified models, where many levels exist for each level of hierarchy. But PROC HP mix has a limited number of statements and options so it does not perform the set of analyses as completely as PROC mixed. You can sometimes overcome this problem if you can run PROC HP mixed first, obtain the covariance parameter estimates, and then use PROC mixed with the PARM statement and the known covariance parameters from PROC HP mixed. You can then perform post-fitting analyses that are not available in PROC HP mixed. Here is an example to illustrate this approach. I'm using PROC HP mix to fit a model with two random statements. S school and P school have thousands of levels. I'm using the ODS output statement to save the covariance parameter estimates from this model into a data set called COVE-PE. Then I fit the same model using PROC mixed. I use the PARM statement with the p-data equals and no iter options in order to use these estimated covariance parameter estimates directly so that they will not be estimated again. But this time, I'm able to use the ls-mean statement with a two-key adjustment to perform adjusted pairwise comparisons which are not available in PROC HP mixed. This Example illustrates the use of PROC PLM for post-fitting analysis. I use PROC GLEMIX to fit a logistic regression model with a random effect. My PROC GLEMIX statement is the bare minimum. I use the store statement to create an item store, GMX, that contains the model fitting information. Then I use PROC PLM to access that item store and perform all sorts of post-fitting analysis such as comparing LS means and producing various plots, such as interaction plots, slice fit plots, etc. Here is the summary of tipping strategies you can use to improve the speed and memory requirements for PROC mixed. Improve the running environment, such as turning off ODS graphics, turning off the results window, running in batch mode, setting the appropriate MIME size values, etc. Use the subject equals option whenever possible so the model can be processed by subjects. Try different DDFM and type equals options. Use alternative procedures. 
Though not specifically mentioned in the examples, you should always try simplifying your model when appropriate. If you like more information on this topic of improving the mixed model's performance, please refer to the resources listed here. You might also want to check out my other demo, Troubleshooting Convergence Failures in Mixed Models, at support.sys.com video landing page. Thank you for watching.